Hi there, my name is Jacob Norris and I'm a 3D environment artist working in games and films. Some of you may know me as Pure Polygons and in this video I'm going to be going over lighting and rendering techniques for your scenes and your assets inside of NVIDIA Omniverse Create. Check out some of the other tutorials I'm creating for NVIDIA Omniverse for things like what is USD, how to set up your assets and assign materials, and a lot of other great features and tips and tricks for the program. So let's jump back into this one and get started on some of the lighting and rendering. So this asset still looks pretty bad for now, just with the lighting setup we have. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this default light here, delete some of these planes in the box that I created, and create a dome light. So under the top, I'm gonna to go to create, light, and dome light. And now I have some HDRIs that I actually use for a lot of my, my setups already. I'm going to grab one of those here and show you. This is often how I like to render my assets. HDRIs and dome lights tend to just do a much better job than most other things you would use in the scene. Unless you have a full scene with all of the surroundings and everything you'd like to reflect off of that asset, then HDRIs will do a lot of work for you. You'll see that actually that we're still getting a lot of contrast and this doesn't quite look great yet still. If I come into my render settings, I'm in real time mode at the moment. You can change that here by going to path traced or real time. And path trace of course is going to give us much more accurate reflections, shadows, and lighting. I'll come back into RTX real time and we can see max roughness here is set to 0.3. That means anything in our roughness map that goes over a value of 0.3 is no longer going to be reflecting the scene with real-time ray tracing. So this is done for performance reasons. The lower the number, the higher per performance you'll get on your machine. But the higher the number, the more accurate things will look and it will feel a lot better in the space. I'm just going to switch my render mode here to path traced and you'll see that this also changes our render setting options here on the right over to path traced for us as well. You have a lot of settings in here you can play with uh, including your total samples per pixel. Uh, 64 is a good value just for previewing while you're moving around the scene. Now that we have uh, our dome light in you can also adjust some of the settings for that dome light we can enable color temperature here and change these values to make the scene warmer or cooler based off of the look that we're trying to go for. And then of course the intensity can be adjusted as well to get a lighter or darker effect coming off of that HDRI. The exposure is a way to do a similar effect with much lower value numbers so it's just easier to quickly see the difference like that. Some of these settings can be played with as well in your render settings under post process. We can find tone mapping and you can play with things like the film, ISO, camera, shutter and you'll get some of those exposure values and you can more accurately define the look that you want for your scene with all of the settings in here. I definitely recommend going through and just playing with all the values and seeing how it affects your setup. As well as going into your dome light, playing with a lot of these values and seeing how that works for you, and playing with a lot of the material values and seeing what that affects as well. Just have fun, play with all kinds of stuff in here, and seeing the, the changes in the way that affects your asset is unique and different for each of the things you're gonna do. Now if I just want to bring a few more things into the scene to just quickly prop this out, I have a couple of files here already. I'll bring those in and we'll see that in just a moment. So as you can see, I had a couple USDs already ready to go and I'm just left clicking, dragging and dropping those into the scene and I'm able to move them around and reference them into this USD file. 
to create this quick scene for us here. After we have something that we're fairly happy with that we'd like to try to render out and get some cool camera effects on it, we can come up here to our perspective camera in the viewport and under the camera tab you can create a camera from view. As soon as you do that it will select the camera for you and we can check out all the properties here on the right hand side. The focal length is defaulted to 18 so it's going to be a bit of a wider focal length similar to what you get from your cell phone camera. If you want something a bit more cinematic then you want to tighten your field of view to between 35 and 70 is what you'll commonly see for movies and cinematics. If you want more of a fisheye lens like a like a cool skater video or some intense action sports then you can bring that down to 12 and lower. I'll stick it back at 35 for now just so we can get some nice detail shots on this guy. And in order to get some nice aperture and focal adjustments on here, we can change our f-stop, which is going to be our aperture. We'll make it a super low value at first, such as 0.1, which you're not going to really have on anything in the real world. And this is going to allow us to see exactly where we're focusing on our asset. As I change the focal distance here, you can see the asset starting to come into view, and this very tight focal blend of where it's focusing on the asset is easy to see because of this low value. We can increase that now to a more accurate number, something that you'd actually get on a camera like 3.5 or 1.8 and it already starts to look pretty sweet in the scene there. You can duplicate cameras just by selecting them and hitting control D and you can change the camera you're you're currently viewing from by going to the camera option and selecting the different ones that you want to to use there. Now I can change my camera, adjust the focal distance again, increase that aperture, and now I have another cool shot that I can switch between just by grabbing my different cameras there and I hit escape, it deselects everything in the scene. After I'm fairly happy with what I'd like to take a screenshot of, let me just rotate this light a bit, maybe get some more dramatic shadows on here, or a little bit more of an interesting lighting setup, perhaps. Something like this is kind of cool. Then when I'm ready to take my screenshot, I'll go up to Edit and Preferences, we can see the Capture Screenshot tab here and make sure that Capture Only the 3D Viewport is checked on. Otherwise it will actually capture the entire user interface and we don't want all this stuff in our screenshots. Then set your directory and you're ready to capture your screenshot. If the current resolution of the viewport is a bit too low for what you'd like to capture, you can come up to the Settings tab and down here at the bottom you'll see Render Resolution you can change that to a higher number and you can get much higher res screenshots really easily. Let's also make sure to save this before we potentially lose any of our content. I'm going to come up to File, just go to Save As and save this as a USD file. I'll cover USD file types in another video just so you can understand what these different names and USD types are. Under my Omniverse tab, we'll find the slot machine project again, and here's that environment project I created before. We'll make this version 02 and save that out. Now we can see it here in our projects, and it's created a thumbnail for us of exactly the last camera that we were using when we saved that. If we switch to another camera and say we want to update our thumbnail to be this new camera position, I can just simply right click on the thumbnail for this USD and click save thumbnail here and that will update it to be whatever the current look is in my scene now. If it isn't updating right away, go ahead and try clicking refresh 
and that will generally fix the thumbnail issue for you. Sometimes you just need to refresh your content browser if new files aren't showing up or deleted files aren't being removed. Uh, just refreshing tends to fix a lot of the issues in there. So now that everything's set up, we're happy with our resolution and the layout of our shot, we can capture the screenshot just by going up to edit and capture screenshot or pressing F10 on your keyboard. If we open up that screenshot, now that we've captured it, you'll notice that the light icon is actually still in the screenshot as well. So when you're capturing your screenshots, you'll want to come up to this show high hide eye icon here and under the show by type you can uncheck lights cameras or anything else that you'd like to hide in your screenshots uh, as well as I have the grid hidden and selection outlines or anything else that you don't want to show up this is also just nice for moving around and viewing in the scene when you don't need the grid anymore and you don't want these other visible assets and cameras and things just turn those off and now when we capture our screenshot again you'll see that that icon is gone and we've got exactly the screenshot that we wanted so hopefully that was interesting for you it's able to help you get moving a lot quicker in omniverse getting your assets set up some simple lighting and you can have some fun and Start creating things. Thanks a lot.